What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell and make sure you don't miss any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now for this video, we're going to be jumping into Heroes Return, issue number one. And this is the follow up, this is the finale for Heroes Reborn. And if you didn't check that line out, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything related to that line. Now, this is written by Jason Aaron, and the art is by Ed McGinnis. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. All right, gang, so as we're diving into this issue, we're picking up with President Coulson. And in the last issue, we learned that he is the one that is working with Mephisto, using a cosmic cube to change all of reality how he wanted it to be. And the backstory they give us is he's somebody that didn't want to be a superhero. Though he did admire them growing up, he wanted to be the one that superheroes and these gods, they all looked up to. The individual that has power above all of them. Now right now, President Coulson, he's leaving the White House and he's headed for Africa. Because right now, Squadron Supreme is going against the Avengers. And Coulson also believed that he had gotten rid of the Avengers. He believed that this, this had all happened using the Cosmic Cube. But because Blade is somehow immune to this power, because he was able to see this cloaked universe, something that everybody else had forgotten, him saying the word Avengers, it started to break this reality, started to create cracks in it. And with Coulson not actually getting rid of Captain America, with just leaving him frozen there in the ice, it led the possibility for the Avengers to, to eventually be able to break through. But that's what will take us to Wakanda. And right now, we have the God of Thunder going against Hyperion. And right now, he is dishing everything he has at Thor, and Thor is throwing it right back at him tenfold. We have Echo, aka Phoenix, going against Power Princess. And that's going to be an extremely interesting fight because Power Princess has already killed one Phoenix before. We have Dr. Spectrum going against Starbrand. And Starbrand, right now Starbrand has a vendetta because Dr. Spectrum had killed Rocket. And so Starbrand is ready to dish out some good old revenge. We have Blur going against Black Panther. And at first, Blur thinks that this is going to be easy. Just some individual with some cat powers. But Blur learns really quick that Black Panther isn't just some ordinary individual. And we see Blur, we see Black Panther, they go for a race. We have Blade going against Nighthawk. And Captain America is currently up in the skies, trying to intercept the president. Because the president and his fighter jets, they are currently trying to target Wakanda. They're going to take out anything and everything in their path, even if it means hitting Squadron Supreme. President Coulson is adamant about taking out all of Wakanda and the Avengers. And one of these fighter pilots just so happens to be Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers without the power to actually become Captain Marvel, just being a regular fighter pilot. But what we see is Captain America land on top of President Coulson's car, his flying car, and landing on top, he cuts a hole on the roof, telling the president that they need to have a talk. Coulson using the cube to try to blast Cap, only for him to deflect it with his shield. And so what we're seeing is these individual battles taking place all over Wakanda. And we see Hyperion and Thor, these two going at one another. But the issue is Hyperion is, is having some power malfunctions. As he is continuously battling Thor, he feels like his body is getting weaker. Every hit feels a little softer. Thor's jaw feeling stronger than his hammer. Something about Wakanda is draining his powers. And he realizes this. He realizes this and he knows that he needs to hurry up and finish this fight before he is completely drained of energy. But he is looking like he is no match for him. Thor sending out a blast of lightning, picking up his hammer and bringing it down with all of his might on top of Hyperion. Picking up with Blur and Black Panther. Black Panther being able to keep up with Blur. And they're making their, their race across all of Wakanda. But Black Panther, he gets tired of this fight. He gets tired of all of this running around 
and he ends up slitting Blur's ligaments, causing him to fall and crash to the ground. And with Blur trying to do everything he can to survive this battle, this is where we see Starbrand completely destroyed the power prism. Dr. Spectrum's weapon completely just crushed into a, a, a blob of a crystal. Because this is the true power of Starbrand. And this kid ready to mess somebody up asking who the heck is next. And this is where we see Nighthawk and Blade. These two going toe to toe, Blade seemingly being able to hold his own. But Nighthawk ends up getting the upper hand piercing Blade's chest with one of his weapons and sending a volt of electricity shooting through his body. And up in the skies, we have Coulson and Captain America going toe-to-toe -to -toe on top of this flying vehicle. And Coulson using the cube to the best of his abilities to try to take out Cap. And while these two are duking it out, while Coulson is shooting a blast of energy from the cubic cap, this is where we see a jet fighter come in, piloted by none other than Carol Danvers, and using the wing ends up clipping the president. Now this point in the fight, Starbrand needed somebody else, somebody else to beat up. And Phoenix needed a little bit of assistance when it came to Power Princess. And so we see a team up of Starbrand and Phoenix. Primordial forces that have known each other for such a long time. And we see Starbrand, we see Phoenix completely annihilate Power Princess. Now Thor is still battling Hyperion at this point. Begging him to yield because Thor doesn't want to have to kill him. And Hyperion, he finds the strength. The strength to knock Thor's hammer out of his hand and send Thor flying off. And Nighthawk detonating a bomb inside the chest of Blade. Now it doesn't appear to have killed Blade, but it has definitely immobilized him at this point. And Hyperion and Nighthawk, they have a conversation. Nighthawk, always withholding information, tells Hyperion that he he has a weakness to Vibranium. And that is why he, he is so weak in Wakanda. The longer he stays here, the weaker he gets. Vibranium is his kryptonite. And Vibranium is ingrained in all of Wakanda. Which makes it the perfect battlefield to fight Squadron Supreme. But these two are still standing and they think they may have an opportunity. Because regardless if this is a fake reality, this is the reality that they know. That they have always remembered. And they are willing to fight to the death to keep things the way they are. Exactly how it is. Thinking that they might be enough. Enough to take on the Avengers. But this is when we see the arrival of Black Panther. Telling both of them that they aren't enough. They're not even enough for the Black Panther himself. And we see Black Panther take both Hyperion and Nighthawk on. And if anybody is able to take both of them on at the same time, it's going to be him because of his suit. And this is where we see out of left field, Captain America come falling out of the sky, diving off just in time. And as he dives off, he does a tuck and roll, and he gives a giant uppercut to Hyperion. And this is where we see Starbrand and Phoenix use the Pandemonium Cube. With these primordial forces, forces that have protected the Earth for eons, they can feel the energies flowing through them, combining their power. They know exactly how to set things right. Now at this point, this battle is pretty much over. Nighthawk being the last standing individual, he tells the Avengers that he wants everybody to be able to remember. Remember that Squadron Supreme was actually able to keep the Earth safe when they never could. He wants them all to remember that he was still standing. And with that, everything goes white. And the next thing Blade remembers is waking up in Chernobyl surrounded by vampires trying to kill him. And everybody else, they're back at Avenger Mountain. And as far as Blade knows, all of them had a completely normal night. They are not aware of anything that has happened. Well, at least almost everyone, because this is where we see Starbrand. Now, Blade, he really doesn't understand why he was able to see through this veil. He thinks that it may have something to do with his connection to the supernatural, but as it stands, he has no idea what happened to the Pandemonium Cube. And in New York City, we see Hyperion flying around and he seems to be lost. He seems to be looking for somebody. Possibly looking for Nighthawk. 
and Spider-Man, he comes up to him and asks him what he could do for him. But Hyperion doesn't give him much information and just lets him know that he was looking for an old friend who doesn't seem to be here anymore. Coulson is another individual that seemed to disappear, and the status of the Squadron Supreme of America, it remains unknown. The government currently having Stanley Stewart, aka Blur, locked up because they have no idea who he is. No fingerprints, no ID, no recollection of him ever actually existing. And he tries to tell them who he is, but they have no idea. Now, Blade believes that these guys were just pawns in Mephisto's old overall plan. And by all accounts, it doesn't seem like they wanted to go along with everything he was doing. They were just more puppets to the grand scheme. But Blade does, t he plans on telling the Avengers everything that happened, or at least as much information as they may actually believe. You know, this is a lot to drop on them, but he knows one thing for certain, that this was an attack. This was an attack from Mephisto. The issue is, how do you go bigger than this? How do you one-up something this grand of a scale? And Blade worries that he's going to regret asking that question. And that's when we're taken to Mephisto. Now for him, this isn't, this isn't necessarily a failure. Because this wasn't the grand scheme. This wasn't the big plan. Mephisto's overall plan was to bring everybody together. To show what the power of one Mephisto could do. And by doing this, by showing the council all of this, he proposes that with one individual being able to have this power, what could 615 more do? What they could truly do with the Council of Red. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I absolutely loved this story arc. It has been absolutely tons of fun, and I loved watching Squadron Supreme get their butts kicked by the Avengers. But this is definitely setting up a much bigger event to come. This is setting up the Council of Red. We are going to see a battle of epic proportions in the future. And this book, it leaves us on a cliffhanger of so many different questions, but I for one am 100% here for it. I love the artwork, I love the storyline, I love Squadron Supreme as a whole. This being, you know, the 25th anniversary, they had to celebrate it. And I think this pays so much tribute to the Squadron Supreme. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you don't miss any of the awesome content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.